get ready for whimsical, fun, and colorful farmhouse style kids Christmas decor, all using items from one of my favorite stores, Target. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Anika, and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So today I have some really fun DIYs for you guys. Now as most of you will know, I recently moved into a new home and I've been painting and trying to get things together slowly but surely. <laughs> And my kids room is not finished yet, but my three girls asked for a pink room and that's exactly what I gave them. Now, I am not ready to reveal the room yet. It is still a work in progress, but I wanted to come up with some bright, colorful, cheery Christmas decor to put in their room, especially since it's kind of a mess right now. I wanted to just add a little bit of that whimsy and magic of Christmas into their space. So I would say today's DIYs lean a little bit more into the farmhouse look, but they're super colorful. But what's fun about them is that you could totally use some neutral colors, maybe some white, some natural tones, and it would look perfect for an adult decor as well. So take these ideas and run with them. I really hope you enjoy them. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Everyone hit that notification bell. And when the video is over, head down to the comments and let me know which DIY was your favorite, which I don't wanna give away too much, but I'm pretty sure that the DIY treat is my favorite today. <laughs> we'll see after everything comes together, but it was so much fun. So make sure you stick around to the end to see that. Also, don't forget to find me on all my social media platforms. Let me see what you're working on or just say hello. All right, guys, it's time to craft. This DIY is gonna start out with this frame that I got from the Target Playground and these two ornaments that I got out of the ornament aisle at Target. They were about $3, but you could also get some of the ornaments out of the playground or you could use some from Dollar Tree that would make it even more affordable. I loved the retro pink and red, so I wanted to go with these. Now, to get the wording onto my wood sign, I went ahead and used my Cricut. However, I did recently do a DIY where I show you how you can get this exact same look without a vinyl cutting machine, just using paint and a pencil. I'll be sure to link that video up above and down below in the description box, so be sure to check it out, especially if you don't have a vinyl cutter, so that you could get beautiful wording right onto your projects. After finishing my wording, I went ahead and detached the hook that was holding the loop on where you would normally hang it onto the tree. And then I just used a little bit of hot glue to attach it to my sign. Now, if you're gonna put this anywhere where little hands will get to it on a regular basis, you may want to use a stronger glue, such as Gorilla Glue or E6000. I'm going to be hanging this on their wall and I'll be the only one switching it out. So I think hot glue will do the trick. Now my kids are constantly asking me, when is Christmas? So I went ahead and attached two wooden clips so that I could switch out the number each day. Now, if you wanted to do a more adult look, instead of doing sleeps until Christmas, you could do days until Christmas and just switch out the retro ornaments for something a little more farmhousey. It would still look great with the red and I love the look of these little black tags that I also got out of the Target dollar spot. I just put the numbers right on with a white paint pen and I think they look adorable. My kids are going to be so excited when they see this. Now I recently made my kids some personalized Christmas trees that will go out in the living room, but for their room, I wanted to make them a fun and colorful Christmas tree just for them. So I started out by using this poster board. I put a ribbon up in the corner and just use it as a guide to make a little quarter of a circular shape. And then I cut that out. This made it just a little bit easier for me to make a cone shape with a nice flat bottom. Once I got my cone 
exactly how I wanted it. I just used a little bit of hot glue and secured it together. Once again, if you want this to be more sturdy, you can use a sturdier type of glue, but for this type of a project, when you're just using poster board, I feel like this is strong enough and it's affordable enough that if the kids totally trash it, you can just make another one with no problem at all. Next, I wanted to put a little stem on the bottom of my tree, so I needed to put a circle on the bottom, also using this um, poster board so that I would have something to secure my stand to after everything was finished. So using a little hot glue once again, I just put some all the way around the bottom and secured it to my disc that I just cut out of the poster board and I trimmed it up just enough so that it wouldn't be seen. Now this in no way has to be perfect. This is not gonna show, so don't make yourself too crazy over getting it to match up. Next, I'm gonna grab some pom-poms, and this is the fun part. I just started using glue all over my poster board and sticking pom-poms on. Now, I got these pom-poms from Target, but to be honest, I would recommend checking Dollar Tree for them. They will be a lot more affordable, and you'll get a lot more bang for your buck. For this project, which was about 10 inches tall, I ended up using two bags of pom-poms. However, I would get three, maybe even four if you're getting them from the Dollar Tree, just to make sure you don't run out in the middle of your project. For everyone to enjoy Standing up close by the Christmas tree Glimmering light, I am right where I want to be I'll be home for a couple of days Wander around with you You and me in the cold Thought it'd never be true Wherever I go, I got you once my entire tree was covered, I just grabbed one of these jumbo pom-poms that I had and put it right on top, making sure to use yellow to kind of resemble a star. Now, this is a candle holder that I got from Dollar Tree that I'm using on the bottom of my tree. You don't even have to do this part. This tree is adorable as is just sitting on the table, but I just wanted to fancy it up a little bit by putting the candle holder on. I love how this looks. If you wanted to make this more adult farmhouse, you could just use white pom-poms and it would just remind you of a snowy tree and it would be gorgeous. Now this next DIY is one you're gonna wanna remember and just keep in your back pocket for whenever you're entertaining. Target has so many fun and adorable little plastic bowls and plates. They get them for every season and I love the patterns on them. Now I've used the bowls in the springtime. I also love the Thanksgiving themed ones, but for today it's Christmas. So I decided to choose one that had kind of more of a retro theme, but each of these are just $2 and you cannot beat a personalized seasonal tray that looks great when you're entertaining for only about $3 once you put the whole thing together. And what I love about this is that you can take them apart as I will show you and you can reuse the pieces. So honestly, these cost me $2 and I love to use this little hack. I'll call it a Target hack whenever I'm entertaining. Now I decided to go with this colorful plate with kind of a retro vibe because it fit right into the Christmas decor that I wanted for my little girls and it has pink on it so that's the one I needed to go with. I'm also going to grab another one of the Dollar Tree candle holders but I have a pink one from when I made this beauty of a platter for my little girl's birthday. She wanted a pink unicorn party so that's what she got. Now all I'm going to do is just flip over my plate. I'm going to use hot glue to attach the candle holder onto the plate. If you want this to be more permanent, please use a stronger adhesive such as E6000 or Gorilla Glue. But I like to use hot glue because this way I can pop these on and off. I can still use the plate for later use and I can use the candle holder for another platter. Now I ended up using this in our fourth DIY, so I'll show you the whole look when we finish. Okay, I had such a blast making those DIYs. Pink is not even a color that I love, but I will do anything for my girls, even 
craft a bunch of pink things for them. But the bright colors are just so whimsical and fun and just bring an extra bit of cheer to a year where I think we could all use a little extra dose of fun. So head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. But now I want to show you which one was my favorite, which was the DIY treat. So fun to make. I made one for myself and I cannot wait to make these with my girls and I really hope you enjoy it. So it's time to eat. Now, when I saw this colorful version of a gingerbread house on a blog called Glue Sticks, I knew I had to try it. I'll be sure to link that blog down below, but instead of gingerbread, we are going to be using Pop-Tarts or if you're budget like me, whatever the store brand is. Now I liked these strawberry ones because they already had red and green sprinkles and there was also some pink in there which was perfect for my theme. I did notice on this box that I initially opened, the sprinkles weren't that bright and when I opened the next box, they were really bright and colorful. So maybe grab two boxes if you're gonna be displaying this for guests and you want it to be the perfect color, just in case. In order to make one house, we're going to need all six of the pastries inside of the box. Now we're going to start by laying one of the pastries horizontally and one vertically right next to each other. Then starting from the middle of the vertical Pop-Tart, we're just going to create a diagonal line from the middle of the vertical Pop-Tart down to the top of the one that is setting horizontally. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once we do this, we should have a shape that resembles the side of a house with a little roof. Now, one thing that was really fun about this project is there were tons of little corners of pastries that I could sneak for myself. <laughs> so once we've done that, we're gonna set that to the side and we're actually going to end up making two of those. Now for the first one, I ended up just doing the same process over. As I was making more houses because I made one for each of my girls, I just set the first one on top of the second one, kind of used it as a template to cut, and that went much faster and it was just as accurate. So you can use that method instead of measuring it out the way we do the first one every time you do this side of the house. Now that we've created our front and back pieces, we're ready to create our side panels. So now we're gonna take two Pop-Tarts, one which is in the shape of a house and one full Pop-Tart. We're going to lay them vertically right next to each other and we're gonna cut the full Pop-Tart right where the edge of the slope of our roof ends. So you want it to be the same height as the bottom of your roof, if that makes sense. Hopefully you can see what I mean in the picture. Once you get going on these, it's really easy to measure these out and you can knock them out really quickly. And once again, we're going to need two of that size to make the side panels of our house. So now we should have two uncut pieces, which will be our roof, two that kind of look like a triangle, and then two side panels. Now in order to glue our house together, we're going to make some royal icing, which is so easy to make and really works well to hold this together. I'm going to use two cups of powdered sugar and I ended up using two teaspoons of water. You might need two and a half to three. You wanna add this very slowly because once you've mixed this all together, you want it to be about the consistency of paste. It should be pretty thick and when it dries, it's going to hold a very secure bond to hold our pastries together into the shape of a house. Now you can use a pastry bag if you have one and if you don't, you can use this little hack. Grab a Ziploc bag, Put all of your icing into the Ziploc bag, and once that's done, we're going to cut a little hole down in one of the corners, and there we go, instant pastry bag that works great for piping this icing onto our house. And now it's time to build. I'm gonna take my front and back pieces that have a triangular top. I'm going to take some of my royal icing and just pipe it onto the two sides of my front and back panels. Now I'm going to take my side panels and just place them right into the glue that I've made with my icing. 
and I am going to have to hold it here for a few moments. Now, after about two to three minutes, this icing does become very tacky and it holds on its own. But until that time, you might have to go ahead and hold on to it just to make sure that your house has a chance to stick together really well. Once that's nice and secure, I'm gonna go ahead and pipe some icing onto the roof and put one of my full pastries right on top. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Now, because I was doing this with my kids, I did also go ahead and put an extra little bead of icing all the way down the middle to hold the roof on very securely. And after this dried, I was able to move these houses around. They did not fall apart, but you still do wanna be pretty careful with them. If you're gonna be decorating them with kids, I would recommend going ahead and leaving it for a day. The icing sets within about an hour. However, the Pop-Tarts are nice and soft. And so if they're being rough with them, those might come apart. If you leave them out for a day, the Pop-Tarts will get a bit stale and they'll be more firm for the kids to work with. And now for the fun part, the decorating. I used a combination of cereal, candy, icing, whatever I could find in my house that was bright, colorful, festive, and cheery. And I just decorated this little gingerbread house made out of Pop-Tarts and I had such a blast doing it. I cannot wait to do this with my kids. I put my little candy house on top of this fun, colorful retro cake stand that we made and I absolutely love how it looks. You definitely need to try this one. It was so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs I had for you today. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. And I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.